This is Gina Pierce, and I'm going to be showing you how to use Zoom meetings to, ho to host live meetings with your students. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to log in using the URL that was supplied on the help sheet where you actually got this video from, and you're going to use your school Gmail account. After you get in, you're going to have the options to schedule a meeting. So you can actually schedule it right here under the meetings tab on the sidebar, or you can actually schedule a meeting right here up at the top. So either way, click on it, you're ready to schedule a meeting. And so from there, you will then title your meeting here. You can put a description. Um, you can change the time to anything you want. You can change the date. If you want to schedule it ahead of time, it doesn't really matter. Duration, I usually don't go for more than 30 minutes max. You don't have to go the whole time and you can be under that time and you can be over. So it's just it's just approximation. Um, all the other stuff, I don't require registration. Um, and then the meeting ID, I just let it give that. I don't really care about a password because I'm not really trying to keep anybody out at this point. Um, in terms of the video, you guys decide if you want to be seen or not seen. So I don't want to be seen and I don't necessarily need to see my students. So I keep those off, but you decide what you would like. Um, for the audio, definitely choose both. You may have students that need to phone in so they could just listen to the audio, maybe not see. Um, and then these meeting options, I personally like to choose mute participants upon entry just because it gets kind of crazy with people coming in and they start talking and there's all these side conversations. So you can decide, you can try um, whatever you want. Um, if you want to have other members of your PLC actually host with you, um, you can put them here, their email address is here. And then you guys can actually be co-hosts. So you can have, I can't remember how many you can have, but you can probably, not probably more than two or three um, would be the ideal amount. Um, you can all host together. So once you figure out your whole meeting thing, you can press save. And then what will happen is you're going to be given a URL. And this URL is what you're going to post in Neo or Google Classroom. This is going to help your students join. Notice how the meeting ID here is the same as the digits on your URL. Um, there's a generic invitation here. It's kind of long. You can see what it looks like. I just kind of make something a little bit shorter. Um, I make an announcement right in Neo on the news page. Um, and then here's actually one that I did before. You can see right here, this was an announcement. It said you're invited to a Zoom webinar. I gave him the date and the time. And then there's that link that I put right in here with the ID number as well, um, because it may prompt them to put in the ID, which is right here. So that's how I actually message it out to students. And then when I'm ready to actually start the meeting, um, I can press this button right here in the upper right hand corner to start it. And so I actually host all of my meetings from my laptop, even though I use my iPad through the majority of it because all of my stuff for teaching is on my iPad. So I'll show you how that works. But you have the option to either host it straight from your computer or your iPad. So I'm using the computer for this though. I'm gonna open it in Zoom. And then it's going to ask me about my microphone and I'm going to say use the computer audio. So I'll join with that. And then this is it. This is people are going to start coming in. Now, as you move around your mouse, this toolbar on the bottom is going to show up. I'm going to mute myself um, right now because I don't, if I'm prepping stuff and trying to get ready for the webinar and there might be background stuff, I don't want to let them hear me just sniffling or whatever it is. So I usually mute myself right away. Just remember to unmute yourself before you start. Um, the other thing I set up on the sidebar is the chat. So you'll notice the chat that came in over here on the side. Um, this is where your students, if you do have them muted, they can still communicate you, with you via text, essentially. So how you can change some of the settings is open up that bottom, um, the three dots on the bottom next to everyone. And um, right now, I'm only allowing students to chat with me. I'm the host. 
Um, you can let the chat feature just completely go away. Just make sure you check no one. Um, you can have them chat everyone chat or you can have public and private. I would probably not do the privately one because I'm not sure I haven't I didn't even attempt it. I don't I don't know if you're able to see the private chats. So I would probably stick to one of the first three. So I'm just going to let the chats happen between me and the host at this point. I can change it anytime if I change my, 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 my mind. So that's the first one I kind of look at. The other one is the participants. So what I'm going to do is I go to manage participants. So now I can see participants and I can see the chat over here. It looks like I do have one that someone that just joined. Um, so I can mute all of them. So if I originally had them unmuted, I can mute them all and be like, no one's talking anymore. I can unmute everybody. And here's some other options as well. Um, I can get rid of the chimes if I wanted to. I can lock the meeting. That means don't let anybody else come in and join the meeting. I don't know why you would choose that because you want your students to always be able to join, but that is an option. Um, I don't want my participants to rename themselves. So I, um, I basically make sure that that's not checked. Um, I am not going to allow participants to unmute themselves either. So I am going to uncheck that. All right. So here's one thing. So I have the iPad that's joined us. Um, I can unmute certain people at different times so I can have a direct conversation and have one student speak at a time. So you do have that luxury um, if you've muted everyone. Notice in the chat feature, I've got Kylie who's joined me here today, my daughter. And so you'll see kind of what it looks like on the side um, for uh, chats coming in. And you can kind of see this is where I would use this as a QA and a um, as I'm going through my presentation. So this is me kind of setting it up. Those are the two main things that I use. So once I'm ready to actually deliver the presentation, I, of course, I unmute myself over here. And then I usually start the share. Um, and so you can share all of these things. I'm going to just go through them quickly. You can share your desktop. So you just click desktop and I go to the bottom and I can click share. And so right now, it, the everywhere I go on my desktop, the students go. And so you can use that as um, an option right there. So um, what I would then do is if I kind of hover up, notice when I hover, I can get that toolbar back. I can annotate anything that I want. So if I want to go to the annotate, I can have all these annotation tools to write on whatever I'm presenting. So check out those tools. There's a lot of cool things there. I'm going to go ahead and clear this one out. So that's just the share your screen. So stop the share whenever you're ready to stop the share. So it goes back to just a blank screen for the students. So there's other options in sharing. There's a plain whiteboard. I don't like writing with my mouse. I like writing on my iPad. So the one I mostly choose is I'm going to use my iPad using the AirPlay option. I'm going to mirror it through my computer. So I'm going to press share. And on my iPad, which you can't see right now, I am acting like I am in my classroom and I am going to AirPlay by swiping the top right of my iPad and I am going to choose Zoom. And you're going to see what shows up in just a second. So I went to the AirPlay, upper right swipe down, and I, I got Zoom Gina Pierce. And that's where I'm at right now. So anything I do on my iPad, I can... Um, I can have my students um, see. So I would then be able to go into my notability and then I would um, be able to access any materials that I had here. And so um, you can have that. So you can kind of see what I have here. So then when I'm done, I can go back up to stop share and I'm back at my original screen. And so from this point, you can um, choose to share, you just do a regular whiteboard. I mean, you decide. So you have lots of options here. At the very end of your meeting, when you're all done, um, you can then end your meeting in this bottom right corner and you have finished your meeting and you've just conducted a live presentation with your students. So those are kind of the basics. Um, check it out. 
if you have any questions, please reach out to your tech mentors. You can also email um, one of your tech coaches as well. So that would be me and Mr. Cooper, Rob Cooper. So thanks for joining me today and good luck.